Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Now, if you've ever found your calves frustratingly resistant to growth, then my friends, you are not alone. Now, this new study that I'm reviewing today compares traditional heavy calf training with low load blood flow restriction training in resistance trained individuals. So let's take a look at what the researchers did, what they found, and what it might mean for your training design. So let's start with some background. Blood flow restriction training involves restricting the blood flow to a working muscle, and this is typically using a pressure cuff while performing low load resistance training. Now, this method has gained popularity over the years as it allows people to use much lighter weights while still producing meaningful strength and hypertrophy gains that are often comparable to traditional high load training. This has made blood flow restriction especially useful in rehabilitation settings or for people who just can't lift heavy due to joint issues or injury. Most of the research so far has focused on large muscle groups like the quadriceps or the biceps and the results have been extremely promising. However, the calves, particularly the soleus and gastrocnemius, present a unique challenge. These muscles are involved in almost every daily movement from walking to standing. They have a high proportion of slow twitch muscle fibers. Now, this unique attribute makes them highly fatigue resistant and potentially less responsive to typical hypertrophy resistance training. Calf muscles are also notoriously thought to be slow to grow, even in trained lifters. And this frustration has led some researchers to explore alternative training strategies, including blood flow restriction training to enhance training stimulus without simply increasing volume or intensity. But until now, very little research has examined how blood flow restriction affects calf growth specifically, especially in resistance trained individuals. And that is where this new study comes in. The authors set out to directly compare two different training approaches, a high load traditional training model using about 70% of the participants one rep max and a low load BFR approach using about 30% of their one rep max. And this is to see how each affects muscle size, strength and perceived exertion over a six week training intervention. So let's take a look at the methods. This study included 27 resistance trained men and women, all of whom had at least six months of experience with consistent calf training. And this was really important as the researchers wanted to examine how trained individuals would respond to different training methods targeting the calves. And the inclusion criteria was to be directly training their calves, not just engaged in resistance training as you might see in other studies. The authors did this because lots of people who lift don't take the time to directly train their calves. That said, each participant trained both legs, but with a different protocol assigned to each leg. One leg performed high load training using approximately 70% of their one rep max, while the other leg performed low load training with blood flow restriction using around 30% of their one rep max. The training consisted of seated calf raises performed three times per week for six weeks. The high load leg completed three to four sets of eight to 12 repetitions with 60 seconds of rest between sets, where the BFR leg used lighter weights but higher repetitions of 15 to 30 reps per set, and they used shorter rest periods of 30 seconds. Now, importantly, the blood flow restriction cuff remained inflated during the entire calf raise portion of the session. And this was set at about 40% of each participant's individual arterial occlusion pressure, which was determined through baseline testing. Immediately after the seated work, both legs performed four sets of 20 standing bodyweight calf raises. The blood flow restriction leg continued to have the cuff inflated throughout the standing portion as well, creating a longer period of restricted blood flow across the full session. To assess muscle growth, the researchers used B-mode ultrasound to measure muscle thickness at three locations along the lower leg. And these included the posterior, the medial, and the lateral regions of the calf. These measurements were taken before and after the six week training intervention. Now, in addition to the muscle growth outcomes, the authors also examined the participants' rate of perceived exertion and their discomfort levels after each session using standardized scales. So let's take a look at the results. What did the authors find? Well, after six weeks of training, neither the high load group or the low load BFR group showed a statistically significant increase in muscle thickness of the medial, lateral, or posterior calf as measured by B-mode ultrasound. Now, the numbers were trending upwards, but neither change was statistically significant, meaning we can't confidently conclude that either of these three day per week protocols 
caused true muscle growth in this sample of individuals. Now, these results are notable, especially considering that both higher load and BFR training have been shown to increase muscle size in other muscle groups like the quadriceps or the arms over similar study durations. The results here suggest that calf muscles may be less responsive to short-term training interventions, or that more volume or intensity may be needed to elicit measurable growth in this muscle group for trained lifters. Most importantly, these data suggest that BFR training won't lead to more growth than traditional training in a muscle that may be difficult to grow, or at least over this short six week time period. When looking at the perceptual data, RPE and perceived discomfort were significantly higher in the BFR group. Despite lifting only 30% of their one rep max, participants reported greater values. And this is likely due to the combination of metabolic stress and occlusion pressure. So what does this data mean for you? Well, one of the most important things to understand about this study is the training background of the participants. These weren't untrained individuals or people new to the gym. They had been regularly resistance training for over a year. And more importantly, they had been consistently training their calves as part of their workout routine. So in a population already accustomed to direct calf training, neither high load resistance training nor low load training with blood flow restriction produced meaningful hypertrophy over the six week intervention. This makes these findings particularly striking. You might expect that trained individuals could still benefit from a structured calf protocol, especially one that includes both seated and standing calf raises with a three time per week protocol. But even with exercises known to target these muscles effectively, the high load group showed no significant growth. And that leads us to the study's central question, which was, could BFR overcome this lack of growth? The authors had hypothesized that BFR might offer an alternative hypertrophic stimulus, but it wasn't more effective. The low load BFR group also failed to show significant increases in muscle thickness, even though the protocol followed standardized BFR training guidelines and consistent weekly progression. So ultimately, this study showed that when high load training wasn't effective in this population, adding BFR didn't overcome the plateau either. This suggests that for individuals who already train their calves regularly, further muscle growth may slow down and become more difficult to detect over short timeframes. Whether that's due to the unique physiological properties of the calf muscles or an insufficient training stimulus, or rather just simply a ceiling effect in already trained individuals remains an open question. What's interesting is that recent studies have shown measurable muscle growth in the calf muscles over relatively short time periods, for example, eight to 12 weeks. My guess as to why we're seeing such discrepancies between studies comes down to a few key factors. Exercise selection being one of them, but also how resistance trained was defined in those studies compared to the present one. But before we wrap up, there are a few important limitations that we need to keep in mind when interpreting the present study. First, the training duration was relatively short at just six weeks. A slightly longer intervention of say 12 weeks might have revealed different results for these trained lifters. On that note, even though these participants were trained, it's not clear whether their previous calf training was effective or consistent, which could influence their baseline responsiveness. Third, the study focused only on muscle thickness using ultrasound. While this is a reliable and direct method for assessing muscle growth, more images at different sites along the calf or maybe more advanced methods may tell us a different story. And finally, it's important to note the discomfort levels in the BFR group were high, and this may have influenced the effort during their training, which we know is important for muscle growth. So what is the bottom line? Well, in resistance trained individuals, neither high load calf training or a low load BFR training led to significant muscle growth over six weeks. BFR training did feel more difficult and was arguably much more uncomfortable, but it didn't translate to better results. So if you're struggling to grow your calves, this study suggests that simply swapping in BFR might not be a magic fix. Longer training durations, higher training volumes, more varied loading schemes or targeting different calf movements may be necessary to see real changes in trained lifters. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your training buddy and hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a new video. And finally, let me know in the comments who of those listing have tried blood flow restriction training and what did you think of it? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.